the first 30 minutes, and then up to hundreds of dollars for each additional 15 minutes thereafter. So the desperate franchise owner, the one who runs the business, has to decide, do I deal with angry customers who are yelling at me because I don't have ice cream, or do I just call the guy and get them to come repair this at any cost, it doesn't matter. So these franchise owners end up paying thousands and thousands of dollars, not because their employees are incompetent or they're bad at training, but because this machine locks them out and they have no idea why. They're looking at a screen that looks like this and all roads point to call the service technician. I watched a bunch of advertisements for Taylor Company, the people who make this ice cream machine and do all the maintenance on it. They hardly talk about their product here. Their advertisements are more about how great their repairs team is. Innovators don't build machines, they solve problems. This is an expert technician. There are 6,500 Taylor technicians worldwide ready to help you. I bet these motherfuckers are unionized though, too. Right? Let's see. Let's see. Why doesn't McDonald's just get Murat to fix all of the machines? <clears throat> I can't see if they are or not. The Taylor Company. A few years ago, Taylor was in talks to be acquired by a... <laughs> Murat could do it. Another company called Middleby. They put together a pitch deck of all their financials to sort of say, like, look at how good our business is. And on that pitch deck, they stated that 25% of their revenue comes from this repair and parts service of their business. Yes, they make ice cream machines, but a quarter of their business comes from just maintenance and repairs. This sort of reoccurring revenue, revenue you can rely on. Bro, I bet they fucking don't fix... Hello, I bet they don't fix the interface hello, streamer, literally hello, streamer, for that reason. Streamer, hello, like, streamer, it, it, hello, it, it does... It does feel like planned obsolescence. Month after month is like gold for investors. People love this because this is like you can project how much money you're going to get every month if you can rely on a certain channel of revenue in your business. Taylor can rely on services and repairs from McDonald's ice cream machines. Remember, up until just a couple of years ago. 135, 350 every 50 minutes after an hour? Absolutely unionized. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's some, some good old fashioned unionized labor, brother. For years and years, McDonald's franchises were only allowed to use Taylor machines. They had no options. They couldn't be like, wow, this machine sucks. I'm gonna go somewhere else. So they had to use the machines regardless. And they had to use this specific machine that breaks all of the time. Our parts and service network is what makes Taylor the company of choice. Okay, you guys want to hear something even more insane, dude? United Technologies, which owns Taylor, last year merged with Raytheon, dude. So now Raytheon fucking owns the ice cream machines. For the food service industry no matter what time of the fucking day the ice cream machine is broke how donald's is making my baby cry how we got our hands on the software for some of these machines to see how never mind sorry apparently uh there was a definitive agreement to sell taylor so i guess united technologies climate controls and security a unit of the united technologies corp uh, sold Taylor Company before they uh, uh, before they merged uh, two years before they merged with uh, Raytheon, so we're safe. The ice cream machines do not have a direct. The ice cream machines do not have a direct relationship with uh, laser guided missiles, boys. This is what John Deere does with almost all new tractors. Some of the most pirated software out there right now is the override codes for tractor computers so farmers can replace their own parts without having to take it into the dealer every time. It's fucking annoying.
Of course, Raytheon wanted to buy them. They have the same business model. Do you know the price of military hardware maintenance? Yeah. Yes, I work for Raytheon, the ice cream division. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I, like I mean, this is how like a lot of fucking companies make money. My taste. He said other fast food chains use the same brand, though, but their machines work. Yeah, that kind of doesn't make Taylor sense. Taylor has tried to improve the, the software component. You would imagine that with a machine that is notoriously broken all the time, they would update their software to give more useful feedback to the user. Like, hey, your cleaning cycle failed last night only by one degree, and that's probably because your hopper was too full. Try to fill it a little bit less next time. Alas, no. Since 2003, when this thing came out, there have been quite a few software updates. But instead of improving usability of the software, the software has actually introduced just new sets of cryptic error codes that don't help anyone solve any problems. I have spent hours in this instruction manual going through all of the error codes and what they mean. I feel like maybe, just maybe, after reading this multiple times and like being in the weeds. I don't believe it. I, I literally don't believe it. Machines and maybe understand what's going on when things fail. But it is clear to me that this machine is not set up for the user to have success in diagnosing and fixing the problem. One person I was talking to was like, I work at McDonald's and the next time the ice cream machine breaks, I'm going to say that capitalism broke the machine. <laughs> they just opened a store and they it was a brand new store brand new machine and they're like yeah in the first few months we called the, the, the guy like the wendy's has times. the same machine <laughs> i am they blown don't away have to call taylor like uh, so many uh, so much of what johnny harris is describing here is literally baked into every part of the capitalist economy it's always Weird. like overly unnecessarily complicated ways of doing shit so that you can have a specialty so that you can justify your existence so that you can have more like uh, uh <clears throat> more professionals and and more proficiency uh it's like it's literally compartmentalized specifically so that like there are other people that are not capable of doing it so that you have to go to like the fucking personal uh guy who is licensed to work on these machines and these machines only it's great it's like, yeah, it's exactly like TurboTax. It's exactly the way that uh, TurboTax and all these other like uh, tax filing, uh, third-party tax filing systems operate, making the IRS as complicated as possible, making it impossible to file your own taxes on your own so that you have to literally, uh, simultaneously they petition the government to uh, be the sole, uh, you know, third-party software that people use, but so that they can is turn the around and sell you example. their their software uh that uh their service basically that uh you need to use making the law impossible to read or understand yep won't this affect mcdonald's that do lower sales since the managers won't want to spend money on the repairs it is exactly like this you create issues and you create uh you make it more complicated on purpose and then you teach the fucking uh, complicated shit to people that uh, have the proficiency or have the license specifically to operate that software or hardware so that you can justify uh, gatekeeping or like locking the uh, the property or making sure that they literally can only rely on your technicians to fix it. Way that a product like this with software this cryptic and horrible can exist in 2021. The menus are horribly complicated. The error codes are not helpful. The buttons don't have words on them. Instead, they're just like a bunch of symbols. Like it's like, press the flavor button, press the ice cream button to get to here. Like to access this menu, press these two buttons at the same time. It's like, how could you ever expect somebody, especially like an entry level employee who's been on the job for like a few days to understand any of this. It is a product that is set up to fail and that has no incentive to improve. Because what this means for Taylor is simply more services and repairs for their pocket. 25% of their hey, entire up, business is based on this. We're, we're, we're talking, hey, come here. We're, we're, we're looking, I'm watching a video about planned obsolescence and how the reason why McDonald's uh, ice cream machines are constantly broken, it turns out is because Taylor, the machine that made, the company that makes these uh, machines get uh, like, 25% of their revenue they generate, they generate from fixing the ice cream machine so they make it unnecessarily complicated. I know. Well, I guess they built it into their 
uh, pricing structure. Plus, it's franchise uh, franchise owned, so they probably offset the costs over to the individual franchise owners. Anyway, can you put some of the stuff in those packages into the fridge if they're uh, freezable or fridge? It's not that I'm lazy. I'm just doing something, so I can't. And then there's the secret menu. Well, she's probably not feeling too great. In addition to the instruction manual that's given to users, I also got a hold of the service manual that is given to the Taylor service people. I don't know. This is like Take the insider manual that gives you the whole picture on this machine. I do not recommend you read it. In this manual, you learn about a separate menu for the service technicians. It's called the service menu. This one is not accessible to the user, the person who owns the machine, the franchise owner. It's only accessible to the service techs who have the very specific code for it. The existence of this service menu is found nowhere in the user manual, the thing given to the person who owns the machine. And yet, according to this manual, this menu contains quote critical operating parameters to the people who are saying it's a fucking ice cream machine holy shit yeah exactly you should be saying holy shit even a fucking ice cream machine has this level of like planned obsolescence built into it and like uh and 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 fucking uh and and this much care and thought built into like continuous revenue streams by uh, by making things as complicating, uh, complicated as possible. Yes, you can. You're going to take it home with... Okay, chat, let me ask you something. Murat goes into my fridge. He finds a, a, a banana cream pudding or whatever from Magnolia. He says, can I eat this? I say, sure, you can eat it. He says, okay, well, then I'm going to take it home with me. It's like motherfucker. It's a whole thing. It's a. It's like a whole tub of of banana cream pudding. Why would you take it home with you? Just eat it here. If you're not gonna eat it here, then you don't want it right now. Oh, you want to give it to your girlfriend? Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks for taking this uh, payment for putting away groceries. Hassle house boggies. Ask Chad, they're on your side? Yeah, you, he already knows. He, he said, ask Chad, man, they're on my side. Parameters for the machine. So wait, if this machine is breaking all of the time and you have a franchise owner who's trying to keep their customers happy and there's a what menu where there are the quote, critical elections. operating parameters that the owner doesn't have access to, just call the guy. Just call the guy. The machine is not meant to give the user a clear picture on why it's breaking. A few weeks ago, a Taylor service technician realized that he was required to install this new software update on all McDonald's machines. He noticed that the update had a bunch of weird new error codes that made the machine worse and less functional. So he posted a video about it, asking for help from other service technicians. Shortly after he posted the video, the video disappeared. When asked what happened, he responded with, quote, the system defeated me. He was clearly told to take the video down. Somebody doesn't want this sort of thing on the internet. Now listen. They're gonna fucking murder him, dude. Johnny Harris, you're gonna get disappeared, brother. You better watch the fuck Eight out, dude. Being ignored by Arjan. Uh -huh. Yeah, chat. People are fat. Uh-huh. Hold on. Wait, say that again? equipment or have a contract for equipment you'll have what's called a mean time between repairs or mean time between failures so the company that you buy from or rent it from or lease it from or whatever the fuck it is you're doing will guarantee a level of service they'll say your this machine shall be up and running for 90 percent of the time or whatever or it won't break down for more often than every nine months right i'm just making up the numbers but so there's a contractual obligation that it, it'll have a level of service that will that it can perform. So it's not just like that they are that they feel like doing this. It's like written into the contract that they can't do this. So you know it's not as simple as the, it's, you're making it out to be. It's like when private prisons uh, that work with the federal government have a quota level uh, uh, quotas that they're gonna have to they're going to fill the prison up with the uh, specific number i'm not gonna sit here and defend private prisons but it's, it's i can't believe you're defending private prisons dude 
it, it's um, it's a matter of forecasting and uh, prior to investment, right? Like, yeah, I'm not gonna get into this. Well, I can't believe my brother just defended private prisons, dude, on stream. That's crazy. Wow. Okay, let's keep going. Listen, this isn't some. Cons Wait, why are you taking my toilet paper? What the fuck, dude? What else, dude? What else do you want? Yeah, you want to take my underwear too, dude? Jesus Christ, this guy comes into my house, takes my fucking uh, little treats that I have for myself that I'm gonna that I'm gonna eat, uh, steals my toilet paper. Anyway, uh, it is top of the hour, boys, which means you already know what that means. Some of you do at least. It's time for a 60 second ad break. Uh, I'm going to run the 60 second ad here. If you no longer want to see the ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do it for $5 or you can do it for free by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Prime subscription a month. You can use it on your favorite streamer or you can use it on me, not your favorite streamer. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Here is the fucking ad break. No. Here it is now. What kind of person defends private prisons so aggressively? Disgusting? Dude, that was a joke. He's not defending private prisons. Conspiracy. There's all sorts of weird conspiracies around the ice cream machines. This isn't one of those. This is actually very rational human and business behavior. When one has a monopoly over ice cream makers, and they've created a particularly shitty product that breaks all the time and gives users no clear feedback as to why it's broken. This company has no incentive to improve. In an open market, the incentive to make your product better comes from competition and comes from basically ramifications. You'll be driven out of business if you don't make a good product. In this case, that's not the dynamic. And in fact, having a bad product is incentivized because it means more money in services and repairs for this business. And the reason why McDonald's corporate is okay with that is because the cost isn't borne by them. It's borne by local franchise owners who have to pay for services and repairs. Taylor has the capacity to make and improve ice cream makers. They do that all the time at Wendy's and Chick-fil-A and In-N-Out. And yet the machine made for their OG exclusive partner McDonald's doesn't receive the same improvement and refinement. Instead, it receives a bunch of new error codes and terrible user experience, which always leads to call the guy. One franchise owner I talked to said, "All See, if you were to do ethical capitalism like the way that uh, Johnny Harris wants us to do, Happy anniversary, sponsored by the World Economic Forum, we would do stakeholder capitalism. So this would still happen but also at the same time, you know, we would say we love our workers. Roads lead to call the technician. Like th this, this product is designed to get you to call the technician. At this moment, as I'm talking to you, 15% of all ice cream machines in the US are down. The standard for most industrial products is that you have less than a 1% failure rate for your product. In fact, the real target for mass industrial products is 99.99966% of the time your product is working. That means 3.14 errors for every 1 million opportunities. What you're seeing here with 15% is a dismal failure. And it is the product of no pressure or no incentive to improve. And in fact, a perverse incentive to keep it shitty. The last chapter of this story is the one that is still developing today. And it has to do with the email I got a few months ago from somebody who's deep in the middle of this. I'm gonna lay out some facts here. Something nefarious going on. News play out over coming weeks and months to see how this happens. But here's what's going on. The guy who reached out to me originally was someone named Jeremy. He was okay. a tech entrepreneur. He invented a pro- Okay. I don't understand why McDonald's would allow this to continue and like literally allow Burger King an inferior product to have a competitive edge. Like why the fuck don't they care? Product that can basically fix this problem of like terrible feedback to the user of these ice cream machines. It's this device that you plug into your ice cream maker and it connects with your phone and it gives you solid reporting on all the things happening in your ice cream machine. Something that this does not do. And it identifies like actionable things that you can do to train your employees, 
to make sure that that problem doesn't happen again. Please. Basically, it avoids this happening in the first place and avoids you needing to call the guy all the time. As soon as Jeremy launched this product, it was a smashing hit with franchise owners. They started selling hundreds of these things to franchises all across the country. People Magazine reports the chain has partnered with Kitch, a company that created technology to help employees oh. manage the machines and reduce downtime. Franchise owners I talked to said that instead of getting these vague error codes, now they actually get like solid reporting on what is happening inside this machine and they can like train their employees to help avoid this. Now let me just caveat for a second. Jeremy and his company Kitch obviously have a big financial stake in this story. I'm aware that he reached out to me and gave me some of this data and that there's a big He's dead now. Conflict of interest in terms of like neutral journalism and my informant being somebody who stands to gain a lot of money if this story comes to light. And that's why this story has taken me literally months to report. I've had to go through and independently report and verify every single thing that Jeremy has told me. Hence this. So yes, while there is a major stake for Jeremy and Kitch for this story and for exactly what I'm saying here, the fact is Everything that I have said here checks out on my own independent reporting. Just let that be known. Okay, so Kitsch got so popular among franchise owners that when at this conference where all the franchise owners got together Tim, late Michael, last year to have a conference to talk about McDonald's things. Sounds like a riveting conference. The head of this organization of franchise owners gets up and, and says, Now this is no silver bullet, but it's my belief that the information it provides increases awareness and results in faster reaction times when a problem does occur. Now to be clear, this is not a McDonald's approved piece of equipment. I mean, he sort of like endorsed it. He was like, this is a sweet product. It's actually helping us out. Soon after this endorsement, McDonald's sent- Killed him. They, they hired a death squad and he did not have an AR-15 to defend himself. So now he's Call dead. Thank God he had life insurance though. With policysponsor.com, you too can, you too can uh, fight the bullet and uh, maybe even dodge a bullet when you can't dodge bullets when the McDonald's death squad comes knocking down your door. Sends an email to all of its franchises that says that they've determined that Kitsch is actually super dangerous. It may cause serious safety risks and they recommend that the franchise owners stop using it, saying that they will void their warranty if they do. Wait, what? So you have this device that is clearly solving a major what problem. The fuck, instead dude? of being like, whoa, tell us more about this. Let's see if we can get this like approved and put it into more shops. They blacklist it and they scare away a bunch of their franchisees from using it. I reached out to McDonald's directly to ask them point blank. Like, WTF, why are you blacklisting a product that Asshole. has the potential to solve this problem? This is actually a pretty good video, the dude. On the internet for. They came back to me with some boilerplate PR language about being committed to their customers and all this stuff, being able to buy sweet treats and all of this. And then this little nugget at the end where they say that McDonald's is testing a connectivity solution with an approved McDonald's supplier. Hmm. In other words, McDonald's is working on a product that does exactly the same thing. Oh, and the company that they're using to do this is called Powerhouse Dynamics, who is, wait for it, owned by the same company that owns Taylor. They're under the same parent company, Taylor and Powerhouse Dynamics. They're keeping it in the family. Oh, and this device, the new one that they're testing out, doesn't give the full picture to the user. It continues to block them out of certain aspects of the machine that could be useful in diagnosing why the machine. Well, it's because again, McDonald's corporate doesn't get punished by this. The, it offsets the costs over to franchise owners as uh, I suspected. And as Johnny Harris also pointed out, so um, they can continue working with this corporation that will then create problems within itself so that uh, those problems can only be solved by its own fucking technician. is always broken. The theme here is the same. It has been the whole time. Two old companies that have been working together for a long time, looking out for each other and keeping control over data so that they can save their own necks from being disrupted by new- This is why they say, but what's the benefit to McDonald's? Um, I don't know, they might be getting paid. I have no idea, but McDonald's, this is why people say like McDonald's is a real estate company first and not necessarily a fast food franchise because 
uh, a lot of these problems are offset or by the franchise owners. They just own the real estate, some of the most expensive real estate. Uh, I don't know how trustable this is because PL is a fucking loser that might say this even if he lost, but... What? What is this? I won my lawsuit versus Twitch on all accounts. Twitch lost everything, including fraud claim against me for the CSGO shuffle allegations. I don't know what that is. Tech. That is like a I don't know story who that is. Like that is as old as time, and it is happening right here in a potentially collusionary way. Oh, Again, is fucking RTBA. You literally, you literally sent that as though I, I thought like Phantom Lord was like some fucking guy that works with McDonald's or is this something. A deep conspiracy? Is there like secret backdoor deals going on? No, this is actually horribly predictable. What this is is old companies who are afraid of being disrupted by smarter, better products, doing whatever they can to hold on to their share of the market. This new connectivity product that McDonald's mentioned to me basically does the same thing as Kitsch, but this new device doesn't actually give the full picture. It still blocks the user out of those things that have been behind the technician secret menu, the things that the user manual itself says are critical. It's the same old story of keeping tight control over what data and experience the user has so that they can continue to maintain their exclusive relationship with services and repairs which is 25% of their business. It's honestly smart, shrewd, cutthroat business behavior. But you know who it hurts? It hurts the franchisees and it hurts all of us who want to go buy McFlurries. This is anti-competitive behavior. I saw you trying stop to squash scrolling new products in the name has... of Yeah, well, anti-competitive behavior, except I'm, I'm certain it has to. Hi, baby. There has to be like additional fucking money that Taylor pays the McDonald's to ensure that McDonald's uses the Taylor ice cream machines and Taylor's fucking own like fixers and shit like that. Maintaining control. So there's a lot of nuance here that I've sort of blasted through very quickly. But the upshot is that McDonald's ice cream makers are broken more than everyone else's ice cream makers, even though they're made by the same company. Because the company that like makes licensing them fees. has no incentive to improve and in fact has an incentive to keep them bad over the years they've done a terrible job improving their software and they've kept employees managers and franchisees in the dark of what's actually going on with their ice cream maker preventing them from actually being able to fix it themselves and when finally someone comes with a product that could actually fix it they squash it in the name of their own product that does sort of a worse version of what that new product was going to do. Kitsch is suing McDonald's for a bunch of stuff. You can go read into the lawsuit if you'd like. And certainly in coming months, we will learn the details of exactly how this is all going down. But for now, next time you're at McDonald's and they don't have ice cream, just know that it's not because of lazy employees. It's not because of lack of training. It's because there's an old relationship between two old companies this music is that don't want things to change. But that's not real capitalism. I love how dramatic he makes his videos, dude. I love how dramatic he makes his videos. Oh, here's the same exact thing, but with farmers hacking their John Deere tractors, brother. Hey, uh, I'm fixing my John Deere tractor, brother. I'm hacking it. I'm hacking it, brother. We're gonna hook uh, my laptop up to this combine and try to get Ask. codes out of it, I guess. Hell fucking I yes. What I'm doing is hacking. Farms today use a tremendous amount of technology. DeerMates claims that you only really have the license to use their software. And for someone to say they own the software, pretty much I love this shit. the whole viability of the entire tractor or the piece of equipment. The only person that can repair those tractors to a great extent is the dealership. I mean, look at the size of this machine. If I had to haul this thing 100 miles every time something went wrong with it, it'd cost a fortune. I mean, just to get it on a truck is a thousand bucks. And by the time you get it hauled somewhere and get it hauled back, you're two grand into fixing something maybe relatively minor. What we've had developed is essentially a monopoly on repair. We live in a disposable society. When our technology breaks, we replace it. But the art of repair is still practiced by a select few in our tech-obsessed culture. Tractors are the workhorses of agriculture. 
But unlike the past, the tractor of today is a complex computerized system that relies on embedded software to function. While technology has made tractors more efficient, it has made repair nearly impossible for farmers who need access to the software to repair their equipment. We went to Nebraska to meet the people at the forefront of Right to Repair, a movement fighting large tech companies for access to the diagnostic software sick. needed to fix our things. I am uh, actually the fifth generation. Vegans be like, I hope these farmers fucking die because they have cows in their farm. Have they considered not uh, not being dairy farmers? I don't care if they fucking uh, can't fix their goddamn tractors. Farming here on this, this operation where you sit today, we've been around for a while, since the mid-1800s. The kids laugh because she's my cat. She follows me around more. The big tractors over here we use for the day-to-day -day operations in row crop farming. Anything that requires a lot Your of Your understanding of veganism is pathetic, says Tofu Not. I'm just fucking kidding, vegans. Chill, okay? Traction. You know, those are both big issues for us. A smaller tractor is like this little guy here. We use for maintenance of the yard. We use them a lot. These little tractors we use a lot in the vegetable operation. This is the tractor that I learned to drive tractor on. One of the things on growing up on a farm that happens is you learn to do everything very young. As soon as I could sit on the very front edge of that seat and push that clutch in, I learned how to drive. And the beauty of that tractor in terms of repair is I can go anywhere and get parts for it. We could tear this thing down and overhaul it in probably a week's time. It's a different era for sure. The Pretty earliest sick. developments were in the engines and probably from Oh, the mid 80s, you know, we started to see computerized components and engines uh, to the point where in the mid 90s, essentially the entire engine is run by the computer. And so now today, all functions of the tractor are run by the computer. The seat in that tractor uh, over there is more complicated than this entire tractor. As tractors have become more high-tech, the repairs have become more challenging. We do not have the ability to hook up a computer to a tractor to diagnose it, to repair it, I'll be back in one or second. even to activate components that we may buy to put on that tractor. Particularly with older tractors, we would, we would buy used parts and put on them awesome. to save money. And today, I can go out and there are used parts for these tractors, these newer tractors that are available. But if I put them on, the tractor won't run. This receiver is, for the most part, a perfectly functioning receiver, okay? The, the, what this does is it receives satellite signals from GPS satellites. TCM in this is broken, okay? It's not functioning. What we were told by Deere is, well, we don't support this anymore. So essentially what they did was they forced us to buy a new unit because they won't support this anymore and we can't get the repairs for it. This is actually my house, really. I, I work from home, I guess you call it, but uh, I got buildings I put up around here just so I could you know, work, from, work from home. This is my latest project I worked on. It's, uh, we call it the Luda Crusher, but it, it's a monster truck I built. My business is Ludica Diesel. I have a repair shop and uh, what I do is pretty much mostly is just to repair John Deere equipment. Uh, just because I used to work at the John Deere dealership for 23 years and all the customers know me. So they come in and it's been great. If, say, it was actually a computer fault where the computer itself was damaged or, or whatnot and stopped communicating and had to replace it, I could physically, physically replace the computer, but uh, the computers come basically brain dead. So you have to have software from John Deere um, for this serial number tractor. My biggest situation that I, well, I can't fix anything, Half you know, every situation now is, you know, because I don't have, you know, John Deere's service advisor, uh, laptop, you know, I can't. Time to steal one, brother, let's do uh, it. Connect to the equipment. Pretty restricted on what I can do as far as uh, the newer equipment. He made his own monster truck? One of the things I've been told some guys are doing to deal with these issues is there's pirated software out there from uh, Eastern Europe. Work from, work from home. This is my... Oh my God, that's sick. Latest project I worked on, it's, uh, we call it the Ludicrusher. But it, it's a monster truck I built. 
My business is Ludica Diesel. This guy is fucking sick, dude. All right, let's go back to where we're at. Europe that guys are utilizing to try to, to get around this to, to be able to work on their tractors themselves. I believe the software I got is a hack version of John Deere's system when it comes to tractors. I mean, I farm. So what happens like, uh, wait, do they, do they talk about the part where they, do, do they like uh, void the warranty then and they're fucking cooked? It, it, so they absolutely have to use, uh, so they absolutely have to fucking use, um, you wouldn't download a tractor. They absolutely have to continue using this guy now or anyone else that could help because you're jailbreaking it basically. Yes, they void the fuck. You'll get sued for infringement big time. How do they? They can't hide it's it though, right? Out of necessity, they break down, and I have to re repair them in one way or another. And it's a lot cheaper to do it myself than it is to haul it into uh, a repair shop or a dealer to have it fixed. We got lots of. I mean, everywhere on a combine, there's a sensor here and a sensor there, and every every single little part of it has a. a, a if it detects it's pirated, they can just shut down your tractor? Dude, that's so scummy, dude. You literally own the fucking tractor, though. Dude, that shit blows my fucking mind. Like, you literally own a piece of hardware that they could just... What the fuck? No, you don't? But you don't own the software? Okay, but you own the hardware. Like, what the fuck? And you want to buy a Tesla? People freak out over this and still use iPhones? No, it's the same as an iPhone, and it's still fucking annoying that it happens with iPhone 2. Why do motherfuckers... Do you guys... Do, do the people... Are the people who are saying, well, you don't own the fucking license for it, or, or whatever. Do you, do you find that to be acceptable? No, right? I'm not the only one who considers that to be completely unacceptable, right? Like, th I hate that that's like... Like, what's the argument for why it's supposed to be this way? They say you own the hardware, but not the software, but they make the hardware connect to the software to pull even worse shit. Software is... It's fucking insane. Right to repair should be the way. I Yeah, it, it literally should. It blows my mind. Like, It's like how you own a computer, but Steam doesn't have to support your library. deal with this exact issue at the laboratory I work out. I assume it's in every industry. I can't touch the equipment for minor repairs and we can't modify the software in any way. I have to ask our rep any sort of change we need. Dude, that sucks dick. That's so shitty. I find it unacceptable, but I think the argument is like, if you buy a PS4, you don't own the PlayStation store, I think. What? No, it's not. It's like saying you can't fucking, you can't put an operating software in your PlayStation if you would like to, because if you put whatever kind of operating software you want in your PlayStation, um, you can still play games without the fucking PlayStation store. And no, it's not like that at all. It's that, they said if you, That's if you like uh, change the operating time. software in your PlayStation, you we'll brick it on I purpose. We'll like if we find out that you put, you change the OS in it, we'll brick it. If you're paying half a million fucking dollars for a goddamn tractor, you should be able to fix it on your own. It's fucking bullshit. Hacked operating software or not, building it so the only options to take it to the dealer is anti-consumer as fuck? Yeah. Electrical sensor in it. 
a couple of years ago we were oh the argument is you bought a tractor that will block you out if it detects third-party software yeah that's fucking bullshit and there's no competition either right i assume do not compare a ps5 versus a tractor man people need that shit to work my friend they were just trying to m m gamerify something I know, I know that the tractor is a necessity for you to fucking survive. I... Also. I guess there's like Caterpillar? What else? The lizard people are coming out as on, what do we do? Yo, I need my PS5 to work. Doing, uh, custom anhydrous, uh, it's fertilizer on cornfields and you have a real small window to be able to get this done in the year and the tractor broke down so i had to find the software to be able to repair my tractor and make my yeah they're getting double fucked too on the monsanto end too right they're, they got fucking ip on them on them beans on them bean stock too yeah they're Fucking seeds, dude. Customer happy and man. Yeah, these motherfuckers then turn around and as small business owners vote for Donald Trump, by the way. You know, just saying. Make, make a living. There's a whole selection of the machines based on serial numbers and what they are. And you got to pick the one out that's the right serial number for this machine. And then you'll be able to come over here. Once you're able to get into this, you know, I can go in and I can do a diagnostic on it and it'll start checking all the codes and looking for what I have wrong. And then I can go up here and I can look at them and see what the problem is and why it's popping up. In 2015, the Library of Congress granted an exemption to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act that makes it legal for farmers to hack their tractors for the purposes of repair. But software modification is still against John Deere's terms of service, which were updated soon after the ruling. Despite this, right to repair is a growing movement that's turning ordinary farmers like Guy Mills into activists. Calling rural people conservatives is just liberals being snooty rich cowards? Oh no, you're right, dude. Um, rural people literally are not conservative. You're so correct on that, dude. Yeah. Motherfucker, where, who are, who, who's voting for Republicans is literally true. It, famously rural people, okay? That's it. That's, that's just it. Like, that's it. You can get sued as a farmer if you end up with crops. That doesn't mean they deserve to be fucking treated this way, by the way. I, I think that they should not. You know, the famously not conservative rural people. There was someone who was in my audience. I saw them in the chat. And they literally said, I live near these farms. I hope that person can tell me if these guys are fucking Trump voters or not, okay? PP poo poo. I wrote an op-ed in the paper after I researched the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Yeah, this is kind of racist. I talked to some other people <laughs> and their farmers bitch. after I wrote There's this. nothing racist about, like, there's, you have to assume that there is, like, some inherent genetic flaw in being conservative, first of all. <laughs> so if you feel that way, then you probably aren't conservative. So why are you making that argument? <laughs> the race of rules. At Hassan Abbey, there is. Opted. They said, hey, we really like what you said. So I said, you know, maybe we should do something about this. So I, I made a resolution through our local uh, Nebraska corn growers. And I said, let's, let's put something in our, in our uh, bylaws there that we, we support a right to repair. And who could argue with that? Then Lydia Brosh, and I, I must commend her, she'd come in there with LB67. I am six names down. The Fair Repair Act gives an individual the ability, you've always had the right, but the ability to purchase the diagnostic tools and to take it somewhere local or to try to repair the equipment yourself. Apple and Microsoft showed up the hearing 
in Lincoln. This is necessary to prevent export technologies from being stolen or the businesses will go down, but at the same time, the services are being exploited to be expensive, which is not fair. What? Why? Why? It, it is not even remotely necessary. Why? Motherfuckers can steal the software already. Like, what, what do you think happens? Like, they can steal the software and the hardware. It's probably already being stolen right now. She makes me mad, dude. This is so fucking whack. Why would Apple care about uh, whether a farmer from Nebraska works on his tractor? LB67 got the attention of big tech companies because it affects the repair of all electronics, including smartphones, computers, and of course, tractors. Again, the way the bill is drafted, it says that any product that is sold and used in the state of Nebraska. If I'm the big guy, what I do is I, I just don't sell my products in the state of Nebraska because they have to be sold here. If it's online, I don't sell to anybody who has a zip code in Nebraska. And if I'm a little manufacturer, I move out of the state of Nebraska. You get lobbyists on occasion, but never has anyone flown in to discourage me from introducing a bill. And their points, I believe, were not valid. I don't believe it's valid that this would open uh, a mecca for hackers. They stated their case. They were doing their job. And I believe I'm doing my job in protecting constituents and helping them, you know, to be able to grow economies in our local towns. If the bill passes, I can go buy this cable instead of building my own. And I would be able to just hook into the data port and be able to get all the information that I need right there. Uh, I wouldn't have to improvise and build my own stuff to be able to see what's going on. LB 67, or the Fair Repair Act, is still being held by the Nebraska State Legislature. I wonder why. As of the beginning of 2018, 12 states are considering similar bills. John Deere declined our request to visit Nebraska dealerships, but they gave us a statement regarding right to repair. Complicated issue impacts all equipment manufacturers with embedded software in their products. Customers, dealers, and manufacturers should work together on the issue rather than invite government regulation that would add costs with no associated value, brother. I'm Ken Golden. I'm the director of global public relations at Deere and Company. Yeah, I was born on a John Deere. Finally talking about right to repair bills. This is such an important thing going on. Brother, uh, uh, don't let that pesky dang nanny state come in and do regulation. When I see the implement dealers, and you do see them, they're people on your main street. You know, you don't wish them any ill. You know, you, you wish them success. You want them to continue to serve the community. And, and I think they can do that as they access or give you access to the technology of the diagnostics. It's just the diagnostics, folks. It's really interesting, these older tractors, um, are still capable of going out and doing a day's work. And I wonder with all the technology we have in the, in the uh, newer tractors, if the same will be true of them when they're that same age. They're gonna be able to fucking hack the tractors to do more than a day's work, brother. I just wanna be able to hack this fucking thing to do three days of work. Um, okay. Watch this Linus video? No, we're done. We're done. I, I've, I've already watched enough of right to repair stuff. Start an OG tractor company that doesn't rely on computers. Do it for the people. I mean, but the, the thing is like computers uh, being like this is a good thing. Ultimately, okay. Having these sorts of amenities uh, built into your fucking new tech is a good thing. It's supposed to be a good thing. But under capitalism, automation or... Rather, more automation does not necessarily mean a good thing because capitalist corporations try to figure out a new way to, you know, exploit that instead of just giving you the added efficiency with no additional cost. They're like, no, I'm going to give you the added efficiency, but then I'm going to create a separate avenue to generate revenue off of you with the added efficiency. The Linus Tech Tips, uh, 
A video came out uh, uh, two days ago, really? They would do it if it was a communist corporation too, though? What the fuck is a... What the fuck is a communist corporation, dude? The Linus video is so good, please last one, Habibi. Okay, we'll watch the Linus Tech Tips video too. Hassle. I'm introducing a right to Don Pecorino law. This video on Karal Karakal, Pakistan is really good. I live there. What? You live there? Okay, I want to watch this really bad. Wait, what the fuck? You're lying, right? Okay, show me the Linus Tech Tips video. Fuck it. Hassle. Words aren't enough. We need There's action. a troubling trend in the technology industry. More and more, the devices we buy are becoming locked down through a combination of hardware and software that's designed to prevent us and independent shops from upgrading Bro, why does Linus Tech Tips keep getting hotter, dude? Kind of weird. Why did you say fuck this guy? 2BRO, thank you for the five gifted subs. The money effect? <laughs> More like Linus Sex Tips, dude. <laughs> Okay, all right, let's keep going. Repairing, and in some shocking cases, even using them in ways that aren't sanctioned by the original manufacturer. This tight integration has brought us improvements, like smaller and less expensive gadgets, but it's come at the cost of producing more waste. Does he actually have an OnlyFans, or is that a lie? Inaccessible, and even manufacturers trying to use their control over your electronics to remove functionality unless you agree to pony up a monthly subscription fee. I mean, I'm sorry, what? Making deals and then altering them after the fact? How is that even legal? It sounds like some kind of fictional dystopia, doesn't it? But it's not. It's real, and it's right now. Thankfully, we do have a solution called right to repair. But before we can take it from a concept to actual legislation Hello, that protects consumers, pay. small businesses, and the environment, we need to talk about it and make sure that we are all on the same page. Is he Canadian? He said about it. After I tell you about our sponsor, Glasswire, instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, or from folks that are on board with either people who hash to see that the vast majority of the opposition to it comes from either people who haven't had it explained to them properly, or from folks that are on board with Right to Repair, even though they don't realize it yet. So for that reason, I think we should start with what Right to Repair is not. Wait, why do you guys keep saying they, them? Like, they're in Vancouver. Wait, is Linus non-binary or something? Oh, it's a media group. I'm like, what the fuck? I just Nobody is calling Line for manufacturers gender to be forced with a gun to their head to repair your stuff. Now, many OEMs these days do offer voluntary repair programs for their products. And sometimes they're an extension of the warranty, like with Koss's headphones, where they will repair or replace your headphones for free as long as you pay the shipping fees. These types of repair programs are great for consumers. But forcing a product manufacturer to implement one could add costs that will either need to be absorbed by the business, potentially putting it in jeopardy, or LTT passed along to the David. customer, potentially making the product more expensive in the first place. Yeah, more like Linus Another touches common tips. argument is that right to repair legislation would hurt innovation. And on the surface, this one sounds reasonable. I mean, if I'm Apple, why should I bother developing a new iPhone if I'll be immediately forced to give the plans for every component to third parties who can then make their own iPhone without the upfront R&D? This is a perfect example of a straw man argument. 
Most of the electronics repair industry is small shops performing relatively simple jobs like screen replacements and keyboard repairs. These are things that wouldn't require Apple to give up enough details about these parts for someone to make their own. Yeah, Linus debate tips, dude. What the fuck? Holy shit. Um, Strawman! Except when they might do just that, leading us perfectly to opposition point number three. If manufacturers can't protect their users against fake or reverse engineered sketchy parts, there is no way to ensure that the customer experience will be a safe and positive one. Think of this. Apple makes the news every time an iPhone lights on fire, and anyone who only skims the headlines is gonna miss important details, like if the user had a shoddy third-party charger or screwed up a DIY battery replacement. That's a fair point, because this kind of thing can cause immeasurable long-term damage to a brand. So it sure is a good thing that no one is asking for that either. With right to repair, no one should be able to build another company's device entirely with third-party components plans, or okay. manufacture patent infringing parts. What they should have is the right to access OEM components and resources to make repairs to consumers. Wait, why not, dude? Just bought a slice of wood at home depot. I'm just saying, I feel like that would increase competition. Forcing companies to become even more innovative and create more cost-effective ways of, of uh, you know, supplying better product overall. Maybe, maybe uh, third-party components cannot, uh, or third-party component-built uh, products will never be able to, uh, I don't know, reach the same level of, of, of safety and security that, like, the original would. Why innovate when you can wait and steal the other idea? Yeah, you think everyone would be in a holding pattern then? Is that what you're saying? Also, that st that theft that you're referring to literally exists within uh, the tech space currently. He's just saying that's not what right to repair is about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That exists already. Look at fucking Snapchat versus uh, uh, Instagram stories and shit like that. I don't see you complaining about that shit. They literally do it regardless. Apple literally does it regardless. They do it all the time. ...devices when required. And the craziest part of this contra... Why would anyone make a better phone than the Motorola Razr when the Motorola Razr was just the greatest uh, achievement that uh, we could ever reach? I don't understand. Controversial stance is how uncontroversial it already is in the automotive industry. We'll talk a bit more about that later. On that note, though, we have a few videos coming out on some very cool electric vehicles, so make sure that you're subscribed. The now the last sucks. argument against right to repair. Yes, you in the back of the room, go. But I don't want to repair my own stuff. Ah, yes, but that's the thing. Right to repair means you have the right to repair it. You can still go out and buy a new one, or you can have someone else exercise their right to repair it for you. Just like with your car, where a combination of laws and industry norms ensures that decades after production ended, you can still get new brakes for your 97 Datsun. But enough about what it isn't. What is it then? Right to repair supporters know that there's no single perfect solution that's ready made right now. So you think IP, hardware IP rights outweigh software IP rights? I think it's harder I think it's literally harder to recreate hardware than it is to recreate software. So hardware IP is even uh, hardware IP seems uh, it's not. How is it not, dude? You need like a literal what the fuck do you mean? Software IP you could like uh software IP you could literally hack and recreate with one person if you really wanted to. Whereas with hardware, you have a literal fucking factory, vibrators, generators, actual fucking, uh, actual conveyor belts and shit. Are you out of your fucking mind? Vibrators are vibrating, uh, vibrating power, uh, engines. 
the overhead cost of recreating and like selling hardware is significantly higher than software, I think. You literally can't decompile code. It's impossible, Asan. You need a factory to build a tractor. Stemlords think they're the think the god of coding. Why are there pro intellectual property leftists in the chat? Don't need a factory to backwards engineer Snapchat. Now, but what it's a 